Hello everyone and welcome to the workshop. I'm Melanie Rushing and I am with Mental Sweet Spot. I'll be bringing Alicia on here soon. Let me make sure I've got her coming on. Um, today we'll be talking about uh, periodizing your, let's here we go, uh, periodizing your calendar for the entire season. So this is based on, uh, there we go, let me get Alicia. <laughs> And long distance running, it's where they split the entire season into large sections and then within that smaller sections so that you peak at the right time. Because we all talk about peaking at the right time and then it's sort of a mystery as to how to do it because kind of hope that you don't peak too early, right? right. Kind of worry about this like, oh no, are we doing too good early in the season? <laughs> like, you never want to worry about that. So we're taking some of those principles and adding them to the mental side. So we're going to get started, but first I want to introduce Alicia. For those who don't know her, uh, Alicia and I are partners in crime now. I looped her in, got her, she's hooked. Mm -hmm. um, so this season with her team, Madawan High School, we've been basically using our business model and concept on her team. And it's been mm -hmm. really exciting. So we're going to talk about how it's worked uh, based on these things we're talking about tonight. And uh, she can give you some more insight as to what it looks like on the field. Yeah, sure. So do you want to, is that your, a good intro? A good intro, sure. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone. Um, so when I started working, first working with Mel, I think what we started doing was trying to lay out kind of what our season, how our season was gonna go. and. Um, for those of you that don't know, I coach high school here in Michigan, so we have a pretty short season. And this year I had a much different team than I've had in the past where I had a very, um, I had more new players than I did experienced players. So we kind of worked and walked through what we were going to do, starting with um, uh, our C's. And we decided first what were the seven most important things that we felt uh, were important to the team. And um, after we looked at those, the first one for sure was culture. I think given the new uh, the structure of the team that we had, definitely culture was really important to focus on. So that was the very kind of like the baseline or the introduction of how we kind of worked through um, that particular week. I guess we, we kind of broke it down to weeks, which I know that you have that document that we'll talk about later. But um, so that was kind of week one that we talked about. And we just kept building on these seven C's. Um, as we went through, we had a lot of indoor practice, a lot of classroom time to kind of work through these. But what we want to do, of course, you know, with your pyramid structure is kind of establish what was really important in the culture of Madawan, um, as well as started trying to build these concepts with these kids and slowly introduce them week by week. So you and I mapped out in detail the first three weeks um, mm -hmm. of what we were going to cover. Um, but as we went through, we, we had to adapt. So I think that's another piece I think that we're going to talk about. So we'll start there, I guess. Yes. All right, so I'm going to see if this will work. Bam. All right. I'm going to see if I can flip my camera and show you guys our pyramid. <laughs> Check it out. It worked. So this is the pyramid Alicia was alluding to. Uh, we start from the bottom and work our way up. So our foundation is we establish that culture she was talking about. So we got together and talked about what the culture has been at Madawan, what she wants it to be moving forward. And then she incorporated the girls' input and rightfully so, it, they melded very well, but it's really important to get your girls' feedback so that they can have buy-in too. So before we move on on that established piece, how do you think that went with your girls? Um, it went really well. Our exercise that we did in the beginning was to have everyone starting from the freshman um, one word only, what was your interpretation, I guess, especially as a freshman, since they really hadn't been in, in it very much, what was your interpretation, your impression of the culture at Matawan? So we would list all of those um, words on the board all the way up through the seniors and even included some of the coaching staff, three of which have uh, played for me in the past. So what we did is we wrote all those um, words on the board and they had a group exercise of kind of eliminating them or really not eliminating them, but coming up with the top five that were really important to them 
the rest of the words are there and they're important, but what are the top five words that were really important to them? So they uh, became uh, selfless, unity, family, determined, and supportive. So those were their top five uh, culture words that were the most important to them. So in order to really establish buy-in from your team, you want to make sure that they have their input because you as a coach might have a different feeling um, of what you want your culture to be, but they really won't have that buy-in until um, they have really participated in that exercise because it, it means something to them. Absolutely. So that section right there establish accounts for a big part of the season. So we assigned roughly 40%, so a big chunk. So if you look at this as if you have a 10 week season, four whole weeks are focused solely on that established piece. So then we move up to develop, spent about 30% on this, where this is really developing the team's weaknesses based on, we did it with the C's. Um, we'll talk about those a little bit more later. But what do you think came up with your girls as far as what weaknesses needed to be developed as you went on? Sure. So confidence um, was definitely one that needed to be developed. I think hands down, we worked through, we worked through the uh, mental toughness profile. Um, and that part kind of worked through some of the established part too. So we, we established the, the process as well of what we do at Manavon. So part of the process is the evaluation and establishing what is important, but also um, how are we gonna kind of frame this entire season? So uh, we took the mental toughness profile individually and then came up with a team mental toughness profile. So weakness, the weak, this, this biggest weakness was confidence for sure. So that gave us an area that we knew that we really needed to focus on um, throughout the season, but really kind of hammer early. Mm -hmm. Love that. And it depends on each player too, but you could definitely see themes and confidence is always <laughs> at the top. For some, sure. For some reason elusive and it's so sad. Uh, but after we worked on developing those, at some point you need to shift to the positive because if you spend the entire season harping on what's going wrong, they're going to forget about the things that are going right. So this right. next piece is refined. So about 20% of the season, so this is focusing on their strengths. Uh, past couple of weeks, really, what do you think their strengths have been and what started to shine through? Sure. So competitiveness and um, commitment were two really big ones for us, uh, competitiveness especially. And I think that when that came out, that comes out in practice, that came out in some of the drills that we do, um, we always want to put competition in, but um, we had some specific games that were geared towards um, trying to drive that competitiveness home. And if they can relate that competitiveness to from a game in practice to the game on the field, then that's really when we talked about being fearless. So if they can become fearless uh, when they compete in a game at practice, but translate that and onto the field when they're playing is really when I think you start to see those amazing plays and the confidence grow and the fearlessness just go, you know, really, they really have a lot of fearlessness and they're not, they're not scared to make a play and things like that. So that um, also very committed, they were very committed to the process and that's hard sometimes. I think when you're in the details of the daily grind to um, forget about, I think so is the process because it is a year long process. It is not necessarily going to show the fruits of your labor every day um, um, or every practice, but on the overall length of the season is when it really shows. So those are the two areas we really kind of focused on to try to bring out the best in our players this year. Absolutely. I love that. So then after you started to see things emerge, and we've actually talked about this recently, which is really exciting, you have to get to the believe portion. So now that you're headed into postseason, where it's the if you're in high school and you actually have a, a structured postseason, or it's the big tournaments at the end of summer ball, or it's the conference tournaments in college, you have to get to this point where you believe and honestly just let go, especially as a coach, but yeah. as players do, let go and believe. So in your experience, this is next week for you. So right. how do you see this going? And do you feel like your girls are there? I do feel they're there. You know, we've, um, we did talk about that earlier this morning, how we've kind of incorporated some rest as well. Um, but if we can just go back to really just trusting everything that you've put your blood, sweat, and tears into um, since the very beginning or the bottom of your pyramid, then that's really when you can just 
just play. We actually use that saying, and we even have wristbands in the past of just play because they've been playing the game for a really long time. And when you, when you kind of let go of all of that other stuff and, and trust what you have been investing in from the very beginning, then that's when, that's when the magic happens, so to speak. And I think that I've seen it a um, hundred times, you know, whether it's uh, watching sports on TV or watching some of these uh, in the college world series, for example, if you hear that a lot of college coaches talk about it, I've seen it happen with my team um, when they can just truly believe in, in themselves and what they're doing in, in the process, then they can just let go of everything and just play. That's really, um, that's really what you want your, your players to be, to peak at the right time. Mm -hmm. ah, I love that. And I see Dawn is watching. Dawn, if you can chime in. I loved your story from the school I coach comes to college. Uh, do you have anything to add as far as that belief part from your playing point of view? See if she'll add it. I don't know if we'll get this. She had a great story where she, um, it's a great only in hindsight, she unfortunately ended her career with an injury, but it's very interesting to hear how she then switched her perspective to help her teammates after that and really focused on believing in others. So that's huge. So it's not just believing in yourself, it's believing in the team as a whole. Right. Very good point. And we've talked a lot about trust. You know, we talk mm -hmm. a lot about trust in our, our process. That's part mm -hmm. of the process. Trusting not only your abilities, but that's an excellent point, trusting each other, because ultimately you need that on the field in, in order to really be successful. So what an excellent, you know, hindsight and excellent um, view from anyone to, especially as a player. But I think mm -hmm. that would translate from player to coach as well. Absolutely. So let me zoom out here. And as a quick recap, so establish is about the fundamentals. Develop is about building those weaknesses. You find your strengths and then believe and trust like we just talked about. So this is our process we go through. And like we mentioned, we talked about the C's, but we'll get to that in a minute. I wanted to show, let me zoom back in because you cannot read that. This is an example of setting up the calendar. So Alicia talks about how it's a rather short season in high school, but really it's not that different from every level. It flies by way too fast. We have all these plans and it seems like we can never get enough done. So I think it's especially important when you want to cover all of this mental game stuff, but you have so many physical skills you have to cover too, you have to plan it out. Otherwise it is way too easy to get lost in the fold. So what I did here was I added the practice times, pretend of course, and add it in the games first, just add in your typical calendar. And then from there you can plot out what topics you're going to cover. So if this is a 10 week season, these are the four weeks for that 40%. And so if you practice two times a week, you can cover two topics. So with our seven C's, I applied one to each practice. And then at the last day on the 23rd, it's like a recap to go over all of them. You could do this with a quick 10 minute informative session at the beginning of practice and then work it directly into all your drills. We'll talk a little bit more about deliberate practice. Um, but Alicia, I want you to talk about how scheduling this out, even though you and I only really scheduled out three weeks, how it helped you stay on track and make sure you incorporated the mental game. Yeah. And I think, I, I think that was, you know, I have never planned out that far ahead before. And it was awesome because it, it also allows you to kind of think through everything. Number one. And number two it gives that, um, specific focus to a topic or we, we had topics of the week, um, but it was also relevant based on what I thought was important, but we also adjusted a couple of weeks based on what was happening. So I think if you, you have the, the forethought to put that in your planning, you can also put, you know, your drills around those types of things. So competitive, for example, when we were on that particular C for the week, we had very specific drills that were uber competitive with uh, teams and things like that. So it, it translates into your practice plan as far as your drills go and things like that, but it keeps you on task. So you don't forget to incorporate that piece because I understand how easy it is sometimes, you know, in high school, we have a two and a half hour practice every day. So 
that two and a half hours when you're writing your practice plan gets chewed up very quickly when you, <laughs> when you want to put in fundamentals and defense and hitting and all the other things that you have to do. So and warm up and breaks. <laughs> yeah, and the breaks, of course. But it definitely, it definitely gives you that focus as a coach and um, it keeps you, you know, kind of committed to the process, which is really important to me that mm-hmm. you keep that involved all the time. And when you write it down and then put some forethought into the actual drills, which I believe we'll talk about a little bit more tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, that is definitely what really helps. Absolutely, like this is my thing. <laughs> I spent yeah. two years learning about this and another two years implementing it and I still found myself being like, ah, oh, shoot, I forgot to mention this. Or like, that would have been an opportune moment to talk about confidence, <laughs> right. but it slips your mind very easily and there's no judgment. There's a lot of things going through coaches' minds, but it's important. Like the title says, if we say the sport is 90% mental, we have to focus on it that much. And I think this was really helpful for me as well, plotting it out. Yeah. And I also um, just put um, on the top of my practice plan, the theme Mm -hmm. of the week, week one, you know, culture so that when we went into our Google Docs and we were planning our practice as coaches, we were all reminded of it. Number one, it helps you kind of focus on those drills. Number two and three, I would always put that time slot in there. It's always at the very beginning or always at the very end, just kind of depending on what's going on. So I just put notebooks. That's, mm-hmm. that's what we do, right? We do the notebooks. And if I put notebooks, then I already have the pre-planned documents or pre-planned speech or whatever it may be. Um, for them but that section um, even if it's just 15 minutes is always in there Mm -hmm. and speaking of google stuff fyi that calendar is on google calendars we use google everything (laughs) i'm obsessed i love it it's super easy to use it saves automatically (laughs) and the girls have access to it so in addition to putting it actually on the physical practice plan adding on the calendar and having the girls check it when they want to remember what time practice starts or they just want to see what's going on that day it's a reminder for them too, and can help them check in to practice faster. For sure. And it allows the kids to get things set up sooner and things like that, mm-hmm. but also be mentally prepared for practice, you know, and yes. they like to, they like to know. They Absolutely. do. They really yeah. do. They really Even do. just two minutes before they're like, what are we doing coach? coach? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I mean, I'm blaming them. Yeah. Uh, so the next piece I want to talk about quickly is we've talked about RCs. So to give you an idea of what topics to cover, Um, And then you can decide to use them or not. Uh, We've been using this for years and uh, hey, (laughs) got a wave. Um, Jay Cardoza, how's it going? Um, But let's look at this and get an idea of these and then decide which topics you guys want to cover. So let me flip you guys back again. All right, so here are our seven C's. Mm -hmm. We cover committed, competitive, confident, composed, in control, courageous, and consistent. Uh, So we put them in this order and we actually did pretty closely follow this order this year, even though we didn't plan out all the C's at once. Um, So you can just go ahead and put them in this order if you want or switch them up if you'd like. And we pair them with um, mental skills. We call these mental strengths. The mental skills are like the fundamentals of the mental game. So we paired them with it just for convenience purposes, but really they can help with all of them. So when we talk about committed, we talk about connecting to your why and setting goals. For competitive, we talk about going on the path to mastery and having a growth mindset. Confidence, we talk a lot about positive self-talk. Compose is about managing your energy and emotions. And control is all about focus. For being courageous and dealing with your fears, we use imagery. And then for consistent, we talk about routines. So we would just plug these in on those first eight days so that the girls have a good basis moving forward. And then <laughs> the topics are endless. You could go from there. your girls, a lot of these fundamentals, um, without even being this strategic, but what other topics popped up that you wanted to work on that you think these things helped with? Um, You broke up just a little bit in the beginning. Can you start, sorry, can you start over? Oh, yes. So when you got through kind of the middle of the season where you're still working on building their weaknesses, which of these 
did you find really helped and which I guess other topics did that help you bring out and work on with the girls? Um, definitely in control. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely one of them because we, and con consistency, I think those two, um, we really needed to learn to manage our emotions because we've talked about, you know, thoughts are just thoughts mm -hmm. until they turn, until you let the, you know, emotion take over. So we really had to focus on that. Our, um, in our consistency of play, which means that translated to our consistency of focus, our consistency of competitiveness and everything. It can, that consistency is perfect at the end, I think, because it does really kind of, you know, encapsulate all of the other C's because if you're mm -hmm. inconsistent in any of the other C's, your play will be inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And that was um, really frustrating. It is for any coach, right? Yeah. Any coach that has, has an up and down team where you play great in game one, what happened in game two, um, but I think the in control piece was probably the biggest one. I think we spent a little more time on, uh, than, than we had anticipated. But again, that's where, you know, we had to adjust on, on mm -hmm. this team and what this team needed and dealing with all of the things that we've dealt with through a season, which happens to every team. It's just different. Mm -hmm. yeah. That for us was really important. And I think the youth, there was a lot of youth on this team. And I think that kind of started to show through a little mm -hmm. bit. Absolutely. I there's always a new aspect to each team and you got to figure it out as you go. So yeah, that's sure. what I wanted to pull out of you was the being flexible part of it and just dealing with the things as they come. If we can give them the foundation, then we have that flexibility, but like, okay, no, we need to spend extra weeks on focus, yep, for which sure. was absolutely the right decision. Cause I feel like it's definitely clicking with them now. I agree. And if it means that you don't cover courageous, for example, mm -hmm. that's okay. Because I, you, as a coach, you're going to have to determine which one is the most important or one that they need the most help in. Mm -hmm. And it will, some seasons you won't probably be able to get to all seven, but in order to be consistent, you know, the first two are really important. You got to be committed, mm -hmm. be competitive, but if you can pick a couple of those other ones, maybe to really focus on, I think that consistency will shine through for sure. Absolutely. So I'm going to flip back to the. Oh, I was as well. I kind of put in composed and in control a little bit. What do you think? I have created, by the way, I've created a PDF for you guys to actually plug in all these things. So you can decide on your topics and plug them into that uh, bottom section and then move on from there, filling out all your dates so that you can just plug and play as the season goes on and be able to see what you've covered. Um, but Alicia, I guess the last thing I want you to talk about is how this has impacted your coaching. Cause you started doing this stuff before I came into the picture and we actually started working together sort of a couple of years ago too. Why do you think this has played such a role in your coaching experience? Um, because it, it was more structured um, mm. and more defined. Um, before it would be, um, for a notebook, I would, I would try to find a story or, or um, a notebook or a, se a section from a book or something that applied to what was going on. So I had to spend a lot of time going through material and not always having the answers of what I thought might be going, I, you know, I didn't really know necessarily that maybe the energy and emotion or they weren't composed, right? Maybe I didn't realize that's exactly what it was. Or, or a lot of it is maybe I didn't realize they weren't confident because they act confident, but maybe mm -hmm. I didn't realize they were. So I think it's the definition behind it, the structure behind it for sure, uh, a very um, good set of words, right? And very good set of things to focus on. We also spent the time of building it right from bottom up, which is also really important. Um, and I had never really thought so much about that committed piece or the established piece of really establishing that culture. Now, maybe part of that is because I haven't had so much turnover in the past. and I had a lot of re returners, but um, I just looked at it a lot differently uh, than I had in the past. And I think it's that, that structure and focus on these seven things um, were really critical in helping me narrow what was important. And then also it gave me um, oodles of material to be able to just give to them worksheets to work through um, and goals and how we set them changed as well. So 
Um, that was, I think, super beneficial for me. Yeah, I think this is probably my eighth year I've done notebooks, but definitely the most different I've ever done it. But I also feel like it's been the most effective. Nice. Well, I am flattered by that. Thinking I would give it back, and I stole it and took it with me to Florida. <laughs> and you still have yeah. it. Oh. I do. I do still have it. I meant to give it back and I right. forgot again. <laughs> so that's all we have for tonight. I want to tell you a little bit about what's coming next. Uh, tomorrow night at eight again, we're going to be talking about deliberate practice. So the way you can get the most out of your two and a half hours, your hour and a half, and starting with like having a topic at the top of your paper and working that through everything you say to the girls, every drill you do, it doesn't matter what physical skills you need to work on, you can always work in the mental side. Like I can, if we need to work on hitting, I can absolutely do something with composure. I can absolutely work in something for consistency and you can do it for a bunch of different drills and challenges and team drills. So we'll talk a little bit about structuring that and being very deliberate with how you plan your practice. Anything I missed, Alicia? No, I think that's it. It's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining. I would like to open it up if anybody has any questions right now. Um, feel free to add it in the comments below and I believe it should pop up for us. Uh, if you don't have any questions right now or want to ask something later, feel free to add them in the comments anyway and we'll be checking in and answering those for you. Um, and then if you want the follow up to this, go to mentalsweetspot.com forward slash workshop trainings, plural. I have the link after, I think it's on the side of this post. So you can just click there. You'll have this video recap, all the information, as well as a tutorial for how to set up Google calendars and a PDF for you for actually laying out your periodized calendar has an example and a blank sheet for you to fill out. So got nothing right now. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Alicia. Oh, I'm glad you found it interesting. Um, and hopefully we'll keep it coming tomorrow and through Thursday. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye.